previously on the Infinite Escape Room. I don't trust you, Ben. Savor this vodka. I'm learning so much today. What's password in Russian? Fuck's sake, Ben, you're putting off the revolution. Take a dump in a cheese vat. How much are you pooing, Alan? Well, there's such things as fecal transplants. Really? You filth wizard. <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Infinite Escape Room, the puzzling podcast for a bunch of geographically diverse chums come together, have a drink, and work together to solve a homemade escape room of the ears. I'm Ben Lave Griffiths, and today I am drinking, I think it's either called Northern Star or Northern Monk. I'm not sure. It was a can of chocolate caramel biscuit porter that hmm. I picked up in Tesco's just before recording. Wow. Oh, I, I mean, think those, I've had that one before. It's quite nice. Those two words are both spelled and pronounced differently. So how <laughs> how is the confusion? <laughs> so, so, so up here, it says Northern Star. But at the bottom, it says Northern Monk. Oh, OK. Now I understand. So I think it's the Northern Star Brewery, isn't it? And then Northern Monk is the range of beer? Maybe. Or maybe North, maybe the other way around. Quickly, Ben. Uh, the other way around. To the hipster can blurb. In the north, we can our warmth. Brewed in the north with Adam Lyle. Search of making the perfect ramen and mastering the six-minute egg. You making this up? No, friend. Have they have they written this in like Cyrillic or something? You seem to be really. They're not expecting to anyone to read this. <laughs> hey, we're Northern Rock. Ro- <laughs> we're Northern <laughs> Rock. <laughs> Gone, mate. <laughs> Hi, we're Northern Rock. Having destroyed the banking sector, we've decided we're now making our own Indian porter. <laughs> and joining me this week, we have. I'm Jamie, and this week I'm continuing to smash through my bottle of Baldur's Mead from the Lancashire Mead Company, uh, gifted very graciously by Hill Burton. Thank you very much. I'm a riggedy diggity Mike Collins, and I am drinking um, Nevermore. It's uh, a collaboration beer between Adnams Brewery in Southwold and the Thornbridge Brewery. Uh, it's an India Porter, uh, and I've not opened it yet, so that's quite horrible. <laughs> that's, that's really unpleasant. Does it taste? Does it taste like ravens? I tell you what, it tastes like. <laughs> It tastes like a bowl of cold washing up. It's got slightly soapy quality to it. <laughs> it's got the slightly cloying texture of a porter with a bit of the bitterness of an India kind of IPA, but none of the character or charm of either. It's really quite unpleasant. Yeah, I'm... Odd string of spaghetti in there. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine that Adams and Thornbridge came together and decided to design one of the worst beers, perhaps as a joke. I'm always wary of uh, breweries that might do a collaboration because I kind of feel that it's like, let's take our beer and mix it with your beer. <laughs> <laughs> we do a porter, you do an IPA. <laughs> I think they've done something similar except with um, Johnson's Fairy Liquid. I did actually just now, I was just kind of glancing at the uh, the can blurb to see if this, this was actually a joke. <laughs> the first words that jumped out were prawn and chorizo paella or mushroom risotto. And I thought, what? I assume those are- that's the ingredients. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, oh, <laughs> it's apparently it's great with. So it's it's clearly, a, it's not a problem with the can. It's just the fact that I don't have the accompanying glass of paella next to me. <laughs> I'm Dom and I'm drinking a gin and tonic. Nice. nice. Mm, cultured. Delicious. What gin? It is a um, stunning cocktail of um, Bombay Sapphire and London Dry from Tesco. Because I didn't have enough left of either to make a full drink. <laughs> a dreg tail. Indeed. Although fresh lemon juice. Oh, no, no. Freshly opened um, pot of lemon juice. Although I've gone rather heavy on the lemon juice. So <laughs> I don't know if that, that'll be audible, but it's it's visible. <laughs> Listeners, um, <laughs> Dom's face is sort of slightly imploding on itself. <laughs> We can no longer see his lips the, on the other side of his face. Yeah, it looks like one of those things you put tea towels in, <laughs> which I suppose is only children of a certain age are going to get that. I'm Laura, and I'm drinking a white wine spritzer. It's a spritzer when you add lemonade or soda water. Yes, and I've done mine with lemonade. Mm, nice. Nice. It's like a wine shandy. Pretty much, yeah. Because I always think of, whenever someone says a white wine spritzer, I always think that it has to come out of like a, like a spray bottle. <laughs> Like you, because you like a soda stream. Like a, yeah, no, 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 no. Like it's take ages to make. <laughs> like if you if you have like um, surface cleaner in a spray bottle, you, you like spritz the counter. <laughs> I was thinking more along the lines of the so old fashioned. So it's a glass of wine, and someone's just yeah. spritzed on top. Yeah, <laughs> open <the> wide. <laughs> Who's at the door? It's food hygiene. Ah, oh, yes. <laughs> Ben's been putting the wine through the window cleaner bottle again. <laughs> Look, the customers aren't complaining. Look at them. Look at them, <laughs> licking all the surfaces. Yeah, they, they cannot move. <laughs> Before we begin, I'd like to thank our Patreons for their continued support, and I'd like to give a special shout-out to three of our supporters. Colin Walker, Jade Shaw, and Jay Cameron Cooper. 
Anyway, thanks very much to all of you for helping keep the show on the metaphoric road. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right then, just what is the infinite escape room? Well, it's like any other escape room you may be familiar with, but this one reaches across all known themes, retail parks, and dimensions. And because it's infinite, there is no end. Every room on the infinite escape room links into the next in one big never-ending escape experience adventure. Each week, one of us will present a part of the infinite escape room. And no, don't worry, it's not me again. I did last week, I know. Dom's going to be doing it this week. While the others try and solve it. If you don't escape within 30 minutes, then terrible things shall befall you. And if you break anything, you will lose your deposit. Dom, what is this week's deposit? Uh, The deposit this week is Mike's new um, for input, for output podcasting toy. (laughs) I mean, if we lose it, uh, if if you break anything, um, I will drive down and submerge it in molten camembert. (laughs) (laughs) That makes it even worse because he loathes camembert. (laughs) Oh, would, uh, would you add a sprinkling of uh, rosemary? <laughs> spritz. Yeah, a spritz. Spritz of rosemary. <laughs> I, uh, sorry, ironically, I, I wanted to protest, loudly protest this deposit, but I was fiddling <laughs> with it because of a very short cable, which means it's on the opposite side of the room as opposed to next to me where it should be, um, protected <laughs> from your cheesy crimes. Um, I, yes, I, I very much... Nothing is safe from my cheesy crimes. Oh, God. <laughs> What an incredible super, like villainous superpower that would be. <laughs> the rogue camembert man. Oh, probably a better pun name for that somewhere. Write in if you have a better pun name for a criminal who drowns things in camembert. <laughs> we'll have to come back to this. This is important. <laughs> yeah, I can't think of anything. <clears throat> no, no, no. <laughs> Stop the room. We don't go on until... <laughs> <laughs> Radio silence till someone comes up with it. <laughs> Are we ready? Oh, yes. Oh, aye, aye. yeah. Then let's enter. The Infinite Escape Room. When last we saw our puzzlers, they had been fired from their briefly held positions as Downing Street advisors after leaking details of prime ministerial cock-ups and wrongdoing, including pooping in a cheese vat. (laughs) Summarily dismissed, they were sent off down a long corridor, which is where we find ourselves today. The corridor is narrow and whitewashed, with wooden floorboards. At the end, you can see a door with a frosted glass window. Next to the door is a plaque reading, Raymond Hammett, Criminal and Civil Investigations. You can faintly hear moody saxophone jazz, seemingly non-diegetic. I want to try that again. Seemingly non-diegetic. Oh, it is a real word. <laughs> Why would I make up words? I, don't, oh, I just I assumed when you said that when you felt you like you made a mistake the first time, I also assumed you're like non-diegetic, a word I'd never encountered before. It was like, oh, non, I don't know, diabetic or something. Was what you meant to say. But no, apparently you said the word correctly, which meant that it's like, oh, okay, this must be a word then. Diabetic jazz is actually like a very good genre. Not too sweet. It sounds good. Yes, yeah, too sweet for me. <laughs> uh, no, non-diegetic just means it's not it's not in universe. So it's like the, like the score. But it's not in universe. It's like the score. Like the football. Like it exists. It's a peripheral top left. What? <laughs> like a movie score. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off, Jazz. <laughs> the score is so like a diegetic movie is when the music you can hear in a film is happening in the film. The characters can hear it too. So non-diegetic is is normal normal film music. How do you know that the characters can't hear it? Uh, because they don't react to it, I guess. Otherwise, every single horror movie they'd be like, "Hold on, I'm not going in there." <laughs> glad we had that aside. I'm glad I put that in. <laughs> Opening the door, you find yourself in an office. The door clicks shut loudly behind you. The office is small. A single window looks down through slatted blinds onto 1930s Los Angeles. In the room is an empty hat stand, a wooden filing cabinet, and a desk with two chairs, one behind and one in front. There are three items sitting prominently on the desk. What seems to be an an address book, open, an envelope, and a large brown paper package what would you like to do can i take a look at the hat stand the coat stand uh you can anything wearable uh no it is empty what is it made out of wood what kind of wood <laughs> hat stand wood oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> i'm a sucker for a, a brown paper package let's go take a look at that desk is it tied up with string i hope so um it is tied up with string sick and written upon it is an address Hammett. 
sixth floor Falcon building, Harvest Avenue. Next to it is a return address, Wharf 7, Cahuenga Marina. I beg your pardon. Uh, you can have it. <laughs> this is like non diatribic. He's making up words again. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry, it was Wharf 7, Cahuenga Marina. Cahuenga Marina. And, and the other address, sorry, was uh, Hammett. Sixth floor, Falcon Building, Harvest Avenue. As you are double reading these addresses, you hear a faint ticking start from within the package. Oh no, maybe some batteries have popped into that alarm clock. <laughs> one of those sticker things and it's come loose, you know, the one that stops the battery from connecting. Someone's pressed the bloody demo button again. Um, can, we, can we open the package to find what I can only hope is the Flintstones alarm clock of my youth? Opening up the package, you find um, an item and a note, which I will um, put into the chat. What has popped up out of the package uh, is a note that says, stay out of our business, along with several, a bundle of brown rods, which I presume is sort of dynamite or some other sort of explosive. There is a clock on the item uh, that reads half past 11 um, and approximately 37 seconds. Um, there is less time as you look at it. Uh, well, the picture's not updated. <laughs> um, and it won't. <laughs> um, and there's some wires coming out of the the bundle of brown sticks and into the clock. There is, from top to bottom, a green, a black, a pink, a yellow, a white, an orange, a red, and a blue. I think we, I think we can safely say it's a bomb. I think, I think it's unlikely that somebody's just posted a load of chair legs and then tied a <laughs> clock to it. Stay out of our business. I'm getting kind of like a gumshoe, private dick vibe from this uh, mm. from this place. Um, mm. You said there was some other stuff on the desk. Um, yes. Also on the desk is an open address book. It seems to be open to the M's. And envelope. Those are the, the two things. Can we take a look at the envelope? Sure. Written by hand on the outside is the words, for old time's sake, best I can do, Sam. Okay, if I open this envelope, is there going to be like anthrax or some shit in there? It's only one way to find out. Let's. I want to open the envelope, but with my teeth. Okay, uh, <laughs> you open the envelope with your teeth. A flower-like substance. <laughs> you find inside nothing dangerous or contagious, but instead a scrap of paper that looks like it's maybe been torn, uh, a torn page from a novel. Ooh. Uh, is the the front side of it, and turning it over, okay. there is the, the back side of the scrap. Interesting. Thank you. So the the front side of this torn paper, it only has a, a, a little bit of text on there. So it's it looks like a bit of a bit of dialogue. It says, "You would do wisely to something. Remember, Duke Richard Plantagenet. I'm assuming the next bit is laugh because it's cut off. Then the the rest of it then is cut off below it. Uh, we've got certain letters highlighted in red, blue, and yellow uh, on the front. And then turning the the note over, uh, it says. Correct wires need to be disconnected in order. Wrong wires or wrong order will knock time off the countdown. Ooh. So the stakes are quite high. Hmm. So we should probably not disconnect wires just yet. I feel there's probably more, might need some more info in the room, perhaps, to defuse this bomb. Yeah. Can we look at the address book quickly to see what's in the M's? Address book on the page it's open to is now also in the chat. Lorem Mipsum. <laughs> <laughs> so we got a um address book open at the ends on uh, it's open obviously double page each page has four addresses on so uh, going top left to bottom right we have the lennox mob wharf seven cahuenga marina which was our return address on the package oh yes um smitty morgan hangs out at lucy's lorem mipsum 1936 america street mickey hammer 312 Orchard Street, Sergeant Red Herring Moore, hmm. LA <laughs> Sheriff's Department, Sam Mattock, Informant in Lennox Mob, Ruby Magnum, 23B Diamond Street, and Mom Home, Elizabeth NJ. Do you reckon Ruby Magnum's our femme fatale? That's a really good name for femme fatale. It does. Thank you. She'd, she'd, like, she'd come walking in like a million bucks um, and <laughs> with a booty, like, I don't know. A pirate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, bombs probably from the Lennox mob, I guess, because that was our return address on our explosive package. Yeah. Um, and we know that Sam Mattock is our informant. And the envelope was from Sam. Uh, ha, 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 ha. Best I can do Sam with the words highlighted 
think colours, wasn't it? Yeah. We can probably ignore Sergeant Red Herring more. Maybe. Yeah. Dom's down to sneaky sneaks. Laura Mipsum feels um, generic. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why? It's been ages coming up with their backstory. <laughs> <laughs> Laura Mipsum had a job working out of 1936 America Street. <laughs> Could we take a look at the filing cabinet? It is made of wood. Um, it has three deep drawers and a, a small lock at the top right-hand corner of the cabinet. Is that like a generic sort of keyhole kind of thing? Yes. Bug out. Um, right, can you open any of the drawers as they are? Um, I can't because I'm not actually here. Can I open any of the drawers that are actually there? <laughs> No, it seems they're locked. Bugger. Yes, if you have the key. <laughs> <laughs> yes. May you? No. So that's the kind of game you want to play, I see. <laughs> Are you non diegetic um, then, Dom, in this context? <laughs> I'm omniscient and yet non present. Is it painful? <laughs> Sounds painful. Um, <laughs> does the. Uh, does... Sometimes is, Ben, yes. <laughs> My dog's got tablets for that. <laughs> does the desk have drawers it does it has um three on one side wonderful any on the other no are the drawers openable they also seem to be locked whoever we... owns this office obviously likes to keep things secure can we have a little look under the chairs you can do we find anything lino ah actually would it be lino in the 30s I don't know when Lino was... Just, yeah, it would be Lino in the 30s. Floorboards, let's go safe. It's floorboards. I, I meant like on the underneath of the seat. Um, no. It felt weird to have floorboards there. <laughs> <laughs> if I walk past the window where the slats are, does the light catch my eyes in such a way that only my eyes are lit up and everything else is in shadow? Oh, yeah. It's it's all the whole thing. Yeah, is, cool. Everything you do is fantastically flat framed. It's, it's not quite black and white, but it is heavily sepia. Beautiful. If only that invisible saxophonist was still around, that'd be a great point for a solo. <laughs> yeah, they don't seem to have been outside the door. <laughs> Does um, Can we rotate the blinds? Uh, you can, but it will ruin the mood. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just wondering if there's like a key stuck to like the other side of a slat. Uh, it doesn't seem to be. Okay, I've, I've, sorry, Laura. I found something in the highlighted letters. So all the letters in red, you can get the word blue. All the letters in blue, you can get the word yellow. All the letters in yellow, you can get the word red from the letters. Oh, yeah. interesting. Bloody hell, Law. <laughs> She's a machine. <laughs> I'm, how dare she attempt to solve the I'm puzzle? Just, I'm, just, I'm, I'm looking at Dom's face for sweat, just because of what happened last time Law and Dom <laughs> were on a puzzle together. Interesting. Fortunately, I am totally in the dark as to what we could do with that information, unless it's a substitution. You're all totally in the dark now, because uh, Ben closed the blinds. <laughs> no, I rotated the blind. <laughs> if anything, it's getting lighter. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so the, the note on the back of that torn page said about the correct or the wrong ways. So we might not need to cut or remove or do anything with all of them. It could just be the red, the blue, and the yellow in a particular order. This probably also doesn't help. Oh, this, this probably actually doesn't help. But um, in the address book, the only name that you can make from the highlighted, highlighted letters is Ruby. Hmm. I don't know if that means anything. Hmm. Oh. Oh. Ruby's are famously red as well. Oh, um, hang on, here's a thought. We've got a return address. We could just post this back and it could be the post office's problem. Um, we're locked in. Oh, we're locked it in. It would be a very, very quick post office as well. <laughs> could we yeah. smash, smash the window with the hat stand and then lob the bottom of the window? <laughs> no, the, the recording gear. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was going to say, I think, I think you'd need to use a, a pricey bit of podcasting equipment to smash <laughs> this window. Do we think that doing so would make future recordings a bit more swift? <laughs> totally. <laughs> Let's make the sacrifice. I'm a fan of camembert. Where's, I think where's John when I need him? Christ. I think you'd break a bit of Mike's soul at the same time. Oh, I can't break that. I pride myself on my punctuality, and I am the late one. Oh. Oh. And you have all the audio faff. And I have all the audio faff. This is just, oh, this is literally hell. This is what I give other people grief about. I live for that grief. <laughs> is there anything else in the room that we've not scene could you do a little 360 walk around if anything looks untoward from looking at the room the rest is um surprisingly plain as if there were there are no other distractions <laughs> damn <laughs> i don't know whether the drawers we need to get into them um or whether they're just set dressing 
Mm. Is the the drawers on the desk? Is it are they locked with a normal keyhole lock as well? They are. Yeah. yeah. We just have a look on the underside of the desk. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Um, you can see a maker's mark printed on a label on there which is set dressing ink. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> I'm loving kind of the spartanness. It's obviously, I've got this image of kind of like, it was a dark night. It's all very fun. I was more. practicing the Marie Kondo method. <laughs> 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 well, you know, maybe he's just not a very well-to-do private eye. This diabetic jazz musician just starts playing out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> he's the next door office. Yeah. <laughs> Looking at the bomb, does it appear that these could be disconnected just using our fingers? Oh, yes. Yep. They could just cool. be pulled out of either the clock or the um, the sticks of dynamite themselves and reinserted with without trouble. Oh, OK. I'm wondering how the address book links into this. I guess that's yeah. that's the thing. That's the bit I'm struggling to connect. So we've got the note from our informant, which gives us kind of some colours, which correspond to some of the um, uh, to some of the wires in our bomb. But the colours also have a anagram of the colours encoded in them. And we've also got this address book. How does that sync up? Would we think that a marina was blue? Oh, you think you like ultramarine? Well, yeah. so we've got like, uh, we've got marina, which might be sort of a blue. We've then got Sergeant Red Herring. And then Ruby, oh, Ruby is also sort of a red. Uh, is there something on there that could be a yellow? Hmm. Well, if instead of Smitty Morgan, we had Shitty Morgan, that could be brown. <laughs> and there is a brown one. <laughs> I'm just thinking it's that definitely an so, Laura's, Laura's found this blue, yellow, and red, which I think is really relevant. Mm. Um, and there's a, like, if Marina was blue and either Sergeant Red Herring or Ruby was a red, we might just be looking for something that was yellow. Um, as the yeah. um, clock on the bomb has now gone past 15 minutes of your uh, yeah. 30 minutes time. Ah. I will um, mention that when Mike said uh, within one sentence that he wasn't sure why the address book was useful and that your informant, Sam, had given you the note, um, I think he summed up why the address book was useful. You find out that Sam's part of the gang, so you can link the his envelope note to the bomb. Mm, so that's that the extent of our interaction with the address book then. Okay. It's probably a safe assumption. Coming as it comes from our non-diegetic, omniscient um, host. <laughs> um, so we've got each of those three colours that are spelling out different colours. What if we were to pull up the wires um, based on what the letters say, but in the order of the colours that they're in, in rainbow order? So the word that's spelt in red is pulled first, which is blue. So the blue wire is pulled first. Then yellow's next in the rainbow, and that spells out red. We pull the red wire second, and then... Blue is the next colour um, that we've got, but the word yellow is written, so we pull the yellow wire out. That's what I've got at the moment. An alternative to that, before we try that, is that if we do it, I've got no reason for this order, but uh, the way I've written it down <laughs> is that the highlighted in red, because you know, I know the, sorry, the, the, the order is because it's the, the order that the colours appear in the note. Mm -hmm. So the red letters, you can get uh blue out of them then next blue is also the next highlighted color uh, and then the blue letters make yellow yellow is the next highlighted uh, color, uh which make red which sort of would link us back around in a circle hmm. um, Ooh. so so you're recommending just pulling those out constantly in a circle just, you know, <laughs> <them> back in. <clears throat> so so theoretically then it would be so jamie the order that you suggested then would be was it blue yellow red uh for me it would be blue red yellow if you did it in rainbow order of what the colors are showing you and ben you're suggesting it would be blue yellow red uh blue, red, red yellow. yellow blue 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 red yellow yes, okay sorry. well should we try blue red yellow then <clears throat> should we try pulling out yeah. the blue wire and see what that does to our clock okay you pull out the blue wire and the clock immediately jumps forward by five minutes uh, jesus oh. no. put it back, put it back. <laughs> we put that one back yeah i, yeah, you, I assume you replace it shit <laughs> i mean do we want to try the red wire i almost don't want to try it now um, I think uh, we've got about f six minutes left. Yeah, so seven. <laughs> yeah. If we, cock, if we cock it up, then we'll die. So just looking at the text of um, the reverse of the scrap of paper, it says, you would do wisely to remember Duke Richard Plantagenet. So Richard of York, give battle in vain. Oh. Ah. That's yes. what I'm thinking. <clears throat> I'm actually really happy that Laura finished that because I kind of hoped that if I started the sentence, somebody else would add something insightful at the end of it. And it happened, which is, is always always nice. We'd still start with blue that way. Richard, red. 
Yeah, but if red equals blue as of the the note. Um, oh, yeah, because the red the red letters spell blue. Yeah. Blueford of Blork, Blave, Blain. <laughs> what did he say again? Sorry. You would do wisely to remember Duke Richard Plantagenet. I can oh, yeah. confirm that that is indeed um, Richard of York. What's a Plantagenet? A rich bastard. A description for another time, mate, oh, okay, where we have more of it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after we win. <laughs> uh, oh, ha- ha- mm, hang on. Okay, hang on. If we look at the... Uh, okay, I, this is the problem. I don't know how, if I'm going, if I'm seeing not just Jesus in toast, but like Jesus in <laughs> unbaked yeast. Um, but... If we look at Duke Richard Plantagenet, then the word uh, Richard Plantagenet has the R in yellow, the L in blue, and the E in red. If we're substituting our colours, it would be red, yellow, blue in that order. Alternatively, we're not substituting our colours, then we're doing yellow, blue, red. Red, yellow, blue follows uh, Roy G. Gibb, Richard Vyorke, Bavangit, Vane. So we should... Try the red one, I suppose? I mean, I, I'm, I'm yeah. down with pulling out the red wire and seeing if we die. I don't know. I mean, what do, what do you guys got? That is what will happen at this point. The clock is at four and a half minutes. <laughs> okay. I mean, so if you're correct, obviously everything's fine, but this will be your last attempt if you're wrong. Oh, geez. I mean, Jamie, Ben, thoughts? I mean, it usually comes down to red, red or blue wire, doesn't it? Famously so. So <laughs> if we're going to go... I mean, I, I'm, you... I'm taking such a stab with this. I hasten to point out. If we're doing... Uh, I, no, I, I think I think you're probably right. We've got... Uh, we even have, in Richard, a yellow R, which would, you know, be red. Um, Law, what do you think? Yeah. Law, do, do you want to do the, the brave thing? Do you want to... If ben and Jamie and I stand behind the desk. I'll pull out the red wire. <laughs> <laughs> so when you red, yellow, blue, yeah? yeah let's, let's just start with the red wire and see if we die. Yeah, see what happens. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, so are you removing the red wire? Yeah. Yes. Removing the red wire makes the minute hand jump all the way up to 12. No! no. Oh. For half a second, nothing happens. And then the bomb explodes. Partially protected by the heavy wooden desk, you are all flung through the office window and begin to plummet towards the streets below. A sonic boom crashes through the air, and you're caught at the last second by a flying convertible. The driver's seat is occupied by a dummy in a spacesuit. On the dashboard sat nav, you can see the destination is set to. Home. Congratulations, you failed to solve the puzzle. <laughs> oh no! So, oh, okay. You, oh, we need go on, Dom. Break it down for us. Where do we fuck up? Uh, when? What happened? Oh, what? I'm supposed to just give you the answer, even though you didn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'll tell you the correct wires, and then I'll see if you guys can tell me why. So, the correct wires in the correct order was orange, green purple oh does red and no red and blue doesn't make orange red, red and blue red and blue makes purple oh yeah. blue and yellow Fudge. makes green green uh, and yellow and red make purple oh, oh. But, but what what uh, how, how do we figure out what the order was because that was because of richard and york gave battle in vain right so how were we to know Richard of York gave battle in vain? Only because, like, I did know that, but it was so long ago that I that would never. Oh, have I, I think I think that's ubiquitous knowledge. That one. That's. I was just I was just hoping someone would, okay. uh, and if not, then I would have basically given that away because if if you do if you guys didn't know the mnemonic, then that's not fair. So I would have just um, <sighs> spelled that one out basically. Okay. You know what? Jamie's done something similar with color mixing before as well. Yeah. Didn't get it then. Ah! Damn it! Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's clever. Uh, for, for, for me, I I had written mm. down red equals blue, oh! blue equals yellow. So I, I wasn't even thinking about like I had the same together. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> oh gosh. Yeah, we just instantly were like, oh, it's a clever substitution. Let's ignore the first colour and do the word instead. <laughs> Arbitrarily. Oh god. Oh, oh that's a that's a that's a good that's a good simple yet flummoxer. Oh ah, god. Should have got that. Dang it, nice. So according to that address book, home is in New Jersey. So that's where next week's puzzle is gonna be. Th- 
Thanks very much for listening. You can subscribe to us on all of your favourite apps, feeds, iTunes, and at our website, www.theinfiniteescaperoom.com. You can follow us and get in touch via Facebook and Twitter at tier underscore podcast. If you enjoyed the episode, and we hope you did, we'd be much obliged if you could leave us a review on iTunes or Facebook, as it's a massive help in reaching new audiences. And as mentioned at the top of the show, we're also on Patreon. If you'd like to support the show, head over to patreon.com forward slash The Infinite Escape Room, where you can listen to episodes a week early, have your name mentioned on the show, get unedited episodes, and more. We love you lots, and we'll hope to see you next time in another Infinite Escape Room. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Bye.